Hello, I hope everybody doing okay. I haven't uploaded the video for a very long time. The reason is I couldn't get a permission to buy a new multimeter. Is one reason, but the main reason was, yeah, I was a bit tired. Yeah, we are humans. We get tired for a variety of reasons. So, um, as soon as I saw a supporters page on EB Block Forum, the new Bryman 786E Block branded multimeter was started to selling. I purchased on January 5th. The price was worth trading dollar 195 and I arrived on Tuesday in Japan time, January 12th. So it was about exactly one week. Yeah. From New Australia, New South Wales. 195 OC dollars. It came with the DHF bag with the bubble what what do you call it bubble bag just like this and the package is uh, white it looks slightly s smaller but it's very similar to 121 gw eb blog it says eb block no bullshit packaging ebm 789 multimeter and yeah inside EB block, yeah, this is, oh, there's a battery with it. These days, many uh, shipping companies do not like having a battery in it, but it seems like it was okay in Japan. And multimeter. Yeah, a Bremen, looks like Bremen test leads. However, today, before I go get into the deep review of this multimeter, I would like to talk about how did I get into this computer and electronics so after i explaining my history how i got into this hobby and now i am most of my life earning in software engineering okay after explaining all these stuff then i will go into this multimeter review the most interest main usage is the digital logic so my main focus will be continuity test voltage test, re resistance test, and then diode test. I would like to start from my first multimeters. I have EB Block 121GW, Keysight, Fluke, Hiyoki, Yokogawa, Kyoritsu, and, and good, nice, expensive multimeter now. But initially, when I started the computers when I was junior high school, I really did not have any money as usual middle class kids in Japan. So I would like to start from what I had in junior high school and high, high school. Most of the kids that time was having fun making models from the curving the woods and making some shape of the plane or cars or something. But one day my father brought home my computer magazine. There was no word of personal computer. This was not the exact magazine but um, it's about the same age. This is 1979 December issue, 1981 issue. Inside th these, and there was an ad for the NEC PC 8000, Tandy TRS 80, and Sharp MZ 80K. This was famous. Then the microcomputer shop was selling Commodore. There was no VIC 1001. It was uh, sold VIC 20 and overseas. Realized it later. I started to read English magazine, but famous one was NEC PC 8000, Apple II, TRS 80, and Sh uh, Sharp. Sharp was really popular that time. M MZ 80. Hitachi had a basic uh, master. These were the famous one I used to see on the magazine. The problem was the price of the microcomputer was very expensive for regular household. For example, the price of the Apple II, you need a Apple II itself plus display. And to put it together, the price was about the same price of the Toyota Corolla or smallest family sedan car sold in Japan. My father was the first generation who were able to buy a car, not cars, a car in the family. And buying a car was a big deal. 
and buying uh, something for mostly hobby use for the same price, yeah, well, it wasn't really happening for many families or many kids especially. So, so what I did was first I wanted to play with these, but I didn't have money. So what I did was I bought digital circuit books, about three of them. This is when is 1984? Yeah, 1986. Na Showa Dokuju Ichin and plus twenty five is nineteen eighty six. Yeah. And there was no internet, so the only way to learn or get the information or any of the digital logic or any of the programming or any of the computer information was going to the bookstore. And my hometown did have many bookstore, but did not have these very geekish technical books so when I started to go to the high school I was able to get a train to go to the high school so I went to the more larger city and bought these three books so I think I was about 14 or 15 or something and then these books was really good to understand how to able to get the skill of the digital logic and how the computer works so after reading these I started to write a digital circuit and these are some of the old one I still uh, I was able to find. Uh, this is the good one. Yeah, this is the first uh, digital logic. Th this is a paper. I, there was no keycat or any computer cat tool. So the only way to write the digital logic circuit was to write it on the paper and connecting each other. And I, you could see from the back or something. I I have erased many times and wrote it again because these days when designing the first draft tend to be using too much TTL ICs so after you write it and it started to simulate in the brain oh you started to see the portion of the optimization so then I re erase it with the eraser and I'll write it down again and yeah so that's why it gets dirty like this after I revising like three or four times on the one paper, it started to difficult me to read it. So I, I rewrote it on a new paper. And this time I knew what was going on here. So almost everything was in my mind. So I was able to write it without much um, revising and more cleaner way. Because once you write it, you started to learn which portion is able to uh, write it down more clean way. If it's second time, if people learn from the first time. So. And then from the here, I started to make the digital logic like this. And the other side of the is pretty crummy. First time the soldering in my life. This was the solder. My first solder. 38 watt. Nothing, just a, pen, a pencil type old style soldering iron. I still have the package for this. It says 38 watt. These old no temperature control soldering iron was really difficult to solder. The tip was canonical type which came first, but the tip itself does not became the hardest portion. Um, let me write somewhere, just a minute. I think it was similar for many people who, who started with soldering iron like this. It's, it has a tip canonical type, yeah, like this. However, this is the tip expect to be the highest temperature to solder, but it doesn't. It The highest temperature is around aside from the tip. To make a good soldering is don't use the tip. Put the least side of the tips and then solder. <laughs> and then and then also the tip these days was just uh, some had a little thin plate uh, over the copper. What I did was take the file and s scrape it. And sometime, sometime I did in the later was change the shape as I like. Hardest place temperature was off of the center and off the from the tip. Then use the file and change the sh shape so the hardest point will be the closer to the tip yeah that's some um, how i learned how to solder in the hard way 
So first time to soldering, I choose the cheapest multimeter, cheapest soldering iron, solder wick. Solder wick, how much was this? It was this was a really bad one. I, I, I later I bought a new one. I bought a better one. Solder paste, 200 yen is about one and a half dollar. Yeah, this is 270 yen, so about two and a half soldering stand. And it was using like this, and more, many times it was slipping over and burning the in, including schematics. Yeah, like this. I'm pretty sure many people was doing the same. One day, during the summer holiday, get, getting on the train, going to the all the way to Akihabara, my hometown was far from Tokyo. It took me about one and uh, 40 minutes or something. A little bit less than two hours for high school kids. Going to the Akihabara was far, but um, yeah, I just wanted to buy a components. There was no Digiki or Amazon. There was no place to buy components from online or something. The only had to go to the physically go to the shop. And, and then choosing the components. In Japan, we call this Bakelite Universal Board. I'm pretty sure it's called differently in other countries. Yeah, this is 8255, is date code 85, 1985. And the first time when I solder, I bought the cheapest wiring wire. It's not for the soldering components, but it was cheaper than regular soldering wire. So, um, but it was horrible. And the wrapping wire, it's tin coated, but the solder does not cover the wire easily. So it, I really had to be patient with the cheapest soldering iron with like a stick. But in later in my life, how to choose the good soldering iron and what kind of the component I should buy, picking up at the, in the store, picking up the component on my hand and examining which part is better. Even I suffer with the cheap IC socket. And this is something I made a much later. I think this was sometime in my, when I was in the university. I will not be able to make clean board like this. Yeah. So these were the, my first two multimeters. This is the one I borrowed from my father. After I'm over 50, I'm still having it. And it's analog. It's, it's really good. Starting with analog multimeter. And then I bought the digital multimeter. I hope, does it work? Yeah, it's still. This really served me very well. I bought this because it was second cheapest one and I was able to find in Akihabara. By looking the design, I knew this was knockoff the fluke. This is the reason when I earned money and I able to buy a multimeter, I bought original version of the knockoff. And the reason I bought this was, it says it using Japanese JRC digital multimeter IC. The price was about 65, around 65 US dollar in that time. And this really served well. Never ever had any problem. I blew the fuse few, many times, but other than that, and there's a one box somewhere in the range that has a decimal point in the wrong place, but other than that, very good LCD display with from many different angles and the uh, lead Test is not great, but it was okay. The best feature you use in the multimeter is the continuity. And the speed of the continuity was very fast. It's not that bad. Because finding the bad solder joint like this over here, continuity test, test is very important. Slow continuity test on the multimeter is the, probably the worst multimeter you could choose for the first one if you're going to buy it. And I was lucky. It was the fast continuity test, good LCD, never had any other bugs other than one, one range has a different decimal point, but other than that, worked perfectly. And it has a proper fuse. And I did blew the current range a few times, but um, was, that was okay. And started the right circuit and somehow, luck, luckily, spending two months and finally debugging two months and when it worked i was really happy and that happiness made me sticking on on this 
electronics and computer for all my life. That was the that was a good thing, could be a good thing, but that could be a bad thing. But um, for me, I think I'm thinking as a good thing. And then buying this all 74 series catalog. It has all the 74 series pinouts and how does it operate? 704 Quad NAND. That time there was many different companies selling the same 704. I can't read it, it's too small. I don't know how I was able to read this when I was in high school. Philips. RCA, ROM, Sanyo, SGS, Sing, TI, Toshiba, Oki, Nasho Semi, Motorola, Fairchild. Yeah, those was listed. And this time was 74 series was changing from TTL to CMOS. From the 74 series from 74HC in Japan. Yeah, and then CMOS version 4000 series. And then micro peripheral IC. Right now, CRTC, CRT LCD, DMA, DRAM controller, clock generator bus, timer, and UART, serial, GPIB, and stuff. Yeah, kind of these list. This is my personal opinion. For the person who able to get into deeply in the engineering, probably being lucky to choose good, not the best, but reasonable and multimeter, I think that play a big role. Because high school kids don't have a money. The only thing you could buy is probably soldering iron, a multimeter, and if you have a laptop, th those days didn't have any laptop, but um, right now, if, if you have a laptop, that's about it. So this is going to be my first Bryman multimeter. I'm really happy to have it. I, I always wanted to have a Bryman especially watching all the reviews and the YouTube. Well, I finally have the Bremen. From next video, I will go into the review of the Bremen BM786. Okay, everybody stay safe and thank you.